If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. What is the long-term effect of too much information? Information, information, I just need some information. I've been dying, I've been dying, is it lack of education? I've been reading, I've been reading without any transformation. I'm addicted, I'm addicted, is it overstimulation? Hey. Welcome to the Success Report. The Success Report. Hear ye, hear ye, come one, come all. You're listening to the Sixth Sense Report with not Darnell, not Joel, but Samuel Say. <laughs> What's up, guys? What's good, bro? How you doing, Sam? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Guys, yo, man, yo, man, this podcast thing sounds really good on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's something I've been thinking about. So, uh, I'm actually privileged for this to be the very fu- uh, first uh, podcast that I'll be, uh, I guess, uh, hosting. So this is, this is great. No, guys, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of your podcast. Uh, I mentioned it many times on my blog and I think on social media about how much I love you guys. You guys being one of my favorite, if not my very favorite podcast. Um, so um, it's a huge honor. I really mean it, man. It's a huge honor for me to be hosting this on your 100th episode. Yeah, man. It's been a while. Yeah, we, we it, we're we're blessed to to have you uh, promote the show whenever you do. So uh, it goes both ways. Uh, well, so this I could do, man. Um, so so first of all, uh, when I learned it was your, I mean, I guess I, I, I mean, sometimes when you're listening to a podcast, you're not really focusing in on the numbers. Sometimes on the episode numbers, at least for me. So mm-hmm. when I learned that you guys were actually that this would be the 100th episode, I was like, wow. It's been like it's that fast already. So you told me how long has it been since you guys started this podcast? I think it's been about was it three years, Joel? Well, it was it was essentially like August 2017, give or take. When when you know, I don't know if we started recording that early, but we started putting together shows and and ideas. But we launched officially like December 2017. December 2017. December 20th was I think our first episode. I think. Because I'm yeah I'm looking at the I'm looking at the Twitter page um, December twentieth twenty seventeen now we're twenty twenty. Does this seem like it's been that long? No, it went by fast. That's that's one of the things. Um, so for those who don't know, I, I blog. Um, I'm a blogger. I slow to write, and I uh, I I just this past August was my fifth year of blogging, and I was like, man, it's been five years. Because when you're in the middle of producing content, you're so focused on what you're doing, and just you're so busy with it that. You sometimes forget just, you know, uh, with your crazy schedule, balancing work and everything, uh, how many hours you really, or how many, you know, how many days are passing by as you're creating this content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you guys um, started in August 2017, but obviously you guys go way before that. So when did you guys uh, first meet? How did you guys uh, first come to know each other? Uh, I uh, randomly got pulled out to a Bible study in Brampton. <laughs> And uh, you and about a thousand other guys in Brampton, dude. Dude, I don't even live in Brampton. This is like <laughs> this was true. crazy. Yes. Like that's true. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You know, our, a, a boy of ours, Jamarian, was like doing a, a DJ sort of thing at uh, at my church at the time, which was Queensway, with the young adults. He was just sort of like hosting, you know, this thing. My my young adults pastor was trying to do, and me and him just started talking. And he's like, "Oh, you should come out to this Bible study." And I was like, "Oh, okay." cool and like i you know it's just i never left <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah we met through jay and yeah and you know uh, you know you know the rest of the crew gideon and and steph and lavar and phil no no for the guys who don't know phil darko yeah no i don't know how they would know this but for the guys who don't know what was the name of this crew what's the name of this crew? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's uh, Christ Lives Sucker. So it's CLS, <laughs> CLS Bible Study. Uh, right. Shout out to Rafer, um, Jade, all those guys. But essentially, the idea was again, we 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 were meeting and they were using Facebook group to meet to organize which days we would meet, and you know we weren't taking it seriously. And so I was asking because I was I was setting up the page and I was asking, okay, well what should I put for the title of the Bible study group? And so Rafer, um, his little tagline was um, CLS, Christ Lives Sucker. And so, you know, we kind of laughed. We're like, oh, come on, man, whatever. So, so you know, I, nobody took it seriously. We just threw it up there. 
Um, and then there's and been, they've been trying to change the name ever been, since. Yeah, we've been trying to change. Yeah, that's the joke. We've been trying to change the name ever since to like Christians Living Sanctified <laughs> and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. So it, it's funny, yeah. but yeah. I think the most infamous thing about that podcast isn't even the number of people that I know who've come in and out of that podcast. I mean, that podcast, sorry, the, uh, the Bible study. It's not even just the name itself. It's just the hours that you guys... Uh, you know, I mean, my, uh, uh, there are some Bible studies that would go to as 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 late or as early as what five a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I don't remember. I don't remember any five a.m.s, but I do yeah, remember getting home at like post three a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we, because remember, because at the time, you know, nobody's married, nobody has kids. Well, essentially, Jay was the only one. But um, so like we would be part of our youth groups or youth leaders, and so after youth night, which ends like around. 11 or 10 depend on your church um we would meet up at denny's at 11 30 p.m and denny's. and then that's when the bible study would start 11 30 p.m and then we would go until like two and then we'd go out into the parking lot and then do pop- popcorn prayer and that would be like another half an hour 45 minutes sometimes an hour um and yeah we were doing that every friday for like three or four years yeah and then, and then uh, Darnell emceed my wedding. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, yeah. And sort of like, it's, the reason I bring that up is it's sort of like a, a, a you know trajectory towards getting to this place where we're both on the mic. Yeah, yeah, no, and and I think I think part of what the what the Bible study was helpful with was it, the Bible study was unique in that it created an environment where we can argue freely. Mm. So there were a lot of guys who you know didn't hold to the views that we had, and all of us came from different churches, but. Um, the bottom line was we're going to come here to argue and we're going to settle it by the, by the time we leave. Hmm. Um, and so Joel knows that I'm a pretty um, competitive debater and I know Joel is as well and a couple other guys in the group. So so Joel already knew how I approach these things. I knew how Joel approached these things. And so it was just, I don't know, I, I, you know, of course, in God's providence, these things came together. Uh, Joel had an idea for a podcast. I had an idea for a podcast. I was, you know, we're just exchanging ideas of what we wanted to do individually, essentially. And then we're like, okay, well, why don't we just do it together? So, so wait, so individually, separately, you guys were already trying to figure, you you guys were already trying to come up with a podcast already. On our own. And then, wow, interesting. Yeah. So, okay. So, so how different did both of your ideas look from... The success where we're at now, uh, Joel. What do you? Th- where were you going with yours? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I jokingly said I want to create a podcast called "I Want to Argue with You." <laughs> like, just in, 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 you know, to some extent, it's a lot like what we do now, which is like present ideas, walk through ideas, talk through ideas, hash out the differences. Um, you know, what would probably be difference would you know instead of using sort of an article i would hope i you know i probably envisioned like having a person sitting across from me like coming at me in in you know a little bit more uh pushing my ideas but you know that's where uh, there's a there's a time and a place for that i guess to some extent but that's i think where the idea that we try to do now is like steel man the opposition right so um you know for example like on the the last episode when you were on the show with us you know uh, trying to talk through that guy's video go you know where i'm like okay well what what can we agree with what can i see that like there's some truth to without totally just like trying to present his ideas in the worst possible way okay let's pull out the truth let's pull out the things i agree with and sort of hash in, out the issues i have um so i think there's a lot of similarity in in sort of my vision of what i was trying to do with what we do uh it just maybe plays out differently what about you darnell what's what's similar what's different uh well I, I think for me I was I was just coming into like I was reading a lot of um material um economics material uh Thomas Sowell and so and would this have been around 2017 that yeah yeah 2017 okay. 2017 for sure um my economics class um I was introduced to Thomas Sowell and so i was reading a lot of, about him and and just merging cuz like like my, my theology is pretty solid and and i and i and i have a pretty good grasp on theology but i'm i was realizing that there's a realm that i'm totally weak in um in 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 economics but i saw um a connection between the two and i realized just podcast wise there there was a void where there wasn't any material on theology and economics 
And so I was just like, oh man, I would love to dig more into these things. And I know Joel, and, and I know Joel was probably, I think the only person I knew who was not just a Christian, but was steadily learning and studying and, and, and knew his economics and, and things like that. So I was always being, I was always able to bounce my thoughts off of Joel. So yeah, so it, I, you know, I was listening to a lot of the briefing and so I was like, oh man, we should have like a briefing briefing for Canada. And so I reached out to him and, and we were just exchanging ideas and I'm like, okay, well, you know, let's just do it together. Hmm. So the briefing is particularly on, as in Al Mohler's briefing Yeah, Al Mohler, yeah, Big Al. Yeah, he's, it's very much focused on um, teaching uh, Christians to think biblically, um, you know, about the world, right? about the culture around them. Or poly- poly- yeah, 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 yeah. I love his shows. It was definitely influential in, in what got me here, mm-hmm. for sure. For sure, so, for sure. It, now, you guys primarily started out and very much do make an emphasis on the you know, on economics and everything else. But was there, outside of that, how did you guys merge your differences and then to become more of a one voice on all these issues? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Off the bat, before Joel talks, I, I was hoping, and you know, and I guess I was hoping that, you know, th- th- there would still be distinction between Joel and I. And I think through the, I think through the years there is distinction now, because sometimes I, I feel like you know me and Joel kind of s- still sound the same and we still kind of agree a lot. I was kind of hoping we would uh, disagree more. Mm-hmm. No, I think I think the best thing about you guys isn't even so much. Of course, you know when you have uh, t- you know two co-hosts, you want uh, some differences, but people don't always want you guys. We don't want you to disagree. I think what's great about you guys is that you guys think differently. You guys communicate mm-hmm. differently, uh, and I think I really much appreciate that. Um, you come from a much more, um, you know, you're you tend to be a bit more theological. Not be, not that you are a great theologian. You're all right. You're all right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Shots I'm kidding. Fired. Shots fired. But yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but but <laughs> you know, but then of course, Joel comes more from the more. I don't know if I want to use it more political, the more ideological, or more or numbers. Especially, well, I would say I'm more economical. Is, yeah, well, that's what I was going with that, right? So, yeah. so then, yeah. So, for, I think the way you guys address, um, you know, address those issues with your differences, I think very, very interesting. It's very helpful. Yeah, and and I think it helps that you know, you know, he's white, and I'm black. <laughs> um, that's always helpful. Wait, wait Joel, Joel's white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I think that, of course, that that's helpful, and I think it helps the conversation. And I, and I hope, I hope, I, I create an opportunity for Joel to speak freely because sometimes it's kind of weird, you know, with black, black, black people and white people talking and, and hopefully Joel and I have been modeling what conversation should sound like between um, black and white brothers. So, so wait a minute, what you're saying is you're sprinkling some of your black privilege to him <laughs> so that he can feel more free Man, about yo, speaking. Is that what you're saying? Sam, Sam, you know, those episode where I gave him the black card to use the N word. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, look, yo, you can use it for the, for the episode, man. You're, yo, you're all right, man. Anybody comes to you, come, tell them to come talk to me. And Joel yeah. was just like, ah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's too funny. All yeah. right. So, okay. So, yeah. So, why did you guys choose the name Sixth Sense Report? Where did that come from? Once you guys started talking, when you were merging all your ideas and your vision, how did you guys come up with that name? Uh, well, essentially, essentially, it, it was me. Um, I think just from a marketing standpoint, I was just thinking, um, that, you know, good marketing doesn't give away its brand, but it, 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 it causes you to say, okay, hold on. What did you just say? Like, kind of like CLS, right? So like, oh yeah, we're part of a Bible study. Oh yeah. I don't care about no Bible study. What's it called? Christ of Succo. Whoa, whoa, rewind. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Stop. Let's talk about, let's talk about Christ lives sucker. Right versus like okay yeah well, I don't care about no damn Bible study, so so I, I kind of wanted to do that again with Six Sense Report where you're just like okay sorry what, what is that, and it would cause people to stop and think. So essentially it was um, my two cents, Joel's two cents, and the listeners two cents, and that there would just be um, conversation. Now of course it's a play on the words um, with the tagline um, how you know we call Toronto the six. And how it the in, in Toronto essentially, if you really think about it, when you look at the country of Canada, Toronto is like I'm not gonna say the heart, but I would probably say like the hub of culture 
in Canada. So like, yeah, any anybody in the US, you know, you go to Africa, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. Um, you know, shout out to the Raptors and Drake. But if you say the six, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, man, that's in Canada. Well, well, we technically, yeah, you know, well, I, I go to church in the six and um and all that stuff. So essentially, you know, we're fortunate to live in in Ontario where we can um kind of we're at the hub of of Canadian culture type thing. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I um I when I first came from Ghana to Montreal, um I I love Montreal. I still consider Montreal essentially my home still in some in some ways. Um nevertheless, anything almost anything you can find anywhere else in Canada, you find some version of that in Toronto. Um Toronto's not just one of the most multi-ethnic, I hate the term multicultural, but whatever. It's not just one of the most multi-ethnic um, cities in the world. It's one of the most diverse or multi-ethnic cities in Canada, particularly. Right? It, uh, you know, it really captures all of what Canada is, probably more than any other city in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the other part of uh, the Sixth Sense report, too, is like, you know, the idea of steel manning sort of is really important to us. And, and that's sort of been captured in the name, right? So it's my my two cents, Darnell's two cents. And we're trying to represent the other two cents, you know, mm. opinions beyond our own um, in, in the issues that we address. And I think, you know, the way that we do that generally is is through an article, right? We use the article and, and we try to steel man the positions in it. We try to represent the positions in it, even if they're not the best positions. We'll we'll try to say, okay, well, a better position would be, um, you know, and so that's you know where the name sort of has some depth to it too. Well, so given how you guys mentioned, you know, um, Darnell wants his two cents to be to be uh, involved in the episode or the the podcast, Joe's two cents, and then the audience's two cents. Then, how then do you figure out how to shape? your episodes to figure out which episodes is would be most helpful to your oh audience. Boy. How do you how do you come up with that? Um Darnell's probably the the master <laughs> of most of those. <laughs> <laughs> well okay, well you know what the the thing is Wait a minute, that, wait a minute. Is this a partnership or is this man just No, uh, it's definitely buggy. it's definitely a partnership, but you I'm know buggy. like 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 we all you know Joel has his strengths and I have my strengths. Yeah. Uh so for example one of Joel's strengths that I didn't realize that I didn't pick up on and doing podcasting is the importance of show notes. Um, Cause you know, I'm, I don't, you know, I don't really, I didn't know that was a thing. And Joel's like, no, 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 no. You know, you gotta have up to date show notes. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and now, um, now it, it's essential. Cause that's something I always look for. And a lot of people give feedback on. So Joel's always, you know, on top of making sure that all of our references, you can find it um, on our, on our webpage, which is good. Um, but as far as like putting together a show, so like, for example, um, we have a brand, right? So part of it is being in the niches. You got to stay on brand. Like as much as you want to do a whole bunch of stuff and run around and talk about whatever, you can get kind of get lost in doing what everybody else does. So for example, there's usually three, there's three core tenants that Joel and I try to hit to make an episode to qualify something. It has to be theological. If you could draw some theological co- component to it, and usually it has to do with morality, um, economics, uh, right? The science of, of of making choices, and then is a Canadian, right? So it's it's a very narrow lane. So, like for example, I'll scroll through Twitter essentially, um, unless somebody messages me, and then basically I'll just say, okay, wait, is it Canadian? Is it theological? Is it economic? Sometimes it's two out of three. Yeah, I would say most are, are probably two out of three. No, no, sometimes yo, actually, yeah, sometimes yeah, it's three lot. out of three. Like, um, yeah, yeah. if if we if we be creative, but part of being creative is trying to bring something to the listeners and add value to them as, I guess, customers. Um, Because part of it too is like, for example, Sam, like you've been listening to the show for a long time and it's so easy for us to just say, okay, um, yeah, so let's just talk about um, 2020, um, election 2020. Let's just talk about it and do that. But our listeners are coming from a different place and there's different things that relate to them. So we got to make sure that we hit the points of theology we got to hit the points of politics and economics and we got to hit, okay, well, well, yeah, that's what's going on over there, but what's going on over here? Like, does that single issue voting thing with Biden and Trump work over here? Right. We still have to bring it home as much as we're always looking at what other people are doing. We want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're hitting home. 
yeah and i mean you know darnell's you know pretty good at uh, let's say architecting uh, an episode and i think that goes back to to some extent our, our skill set you know darnell definitely has a little more of the uh the reporter slash you know journalist in him than than myself um i would say maybe i'm a little more of a commentator mm-hmm. and but you know going back to the show notes page you know for me i was like Darnell, man, I'm going to say so many controversial things because I like I know my opinions are so contrarian. I was like, if I don't have support for this, people are just going to be like, oh, you're just talking. Like you just, you know, you don't have. Mm-hmm. So it was like from day one, like, okay, I, when I, like when I do, I, I do the show notes page, I literally will listen to the episode usually only once, but, or sometimes much, much more, or sometimes twice or three times, but I'll be listening for things that I say to make sure I have show notes for everything. <laughs> well, you know what the joke is? I don't even listen to the episodes, man. Once it's done, it's done. I'm out of there. Oh, bro. I'm out of there. I don't listen to them. <laughs> I, 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 okay. You know what? So I, I know all about that, man. My goodness, man. Well, you know, before we even get to that part, yeah. um, one of the things I love about you guys is how Canadian you are. I actually really appreciate that. Um, I think you guys are actually the only podcast that I listen to. Uh, sorry, the only podcast, the only Canadian podcast I listen to. Um, because man, I find a lot of Canadian podcasts or Canadian, you know, political podcast, political uh, podcast or anything to do with Canadian issues. I tend to find them pretty boring and you guys do a great job of, uh, being able to maintain um, just a, a fun atmosphere while addressing these issues that affect Canadians. That's something I, I'm actually pretty envious of because I wish I could do that. Uh, what I write about is mostly American or mostly not tied to really any real community, particularly or nation, mm-hmm. um, because I have a hard time writing about Canadian issues in a, a very, um, hopefully, you know, I don't know. I think gripping manner, but you guys do a good job of doing that. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. You know what? You know what, Sam? Honestly, for me, like I think it's a like maturation process for me because I wasn't as proud to be a Canadian when I was in my younger days hmm. as a kid and as a teen. I wasn't really proud. I kind and not that I hated the country or anything like that. It was just that I took it for granted because I grew up here. Um, but as I start to travel more um, and you get older and you go through some illnesses and then you got to rely on the system and and you travel places, you know, as much as you go to Jamaica or Trinidad or you go to England um, and you see how beautiful those countries are. After two weeks, what are you saying? Yo, man, I want to go home. <laughs> you know, I want to go home. I want to yeah. go to Pizza Depot and, yeah. <laughs> and just, you know what I mean? And just smell some fresh snow. Like, and and that's why now, like, you know, singing the national anthem and all those things. I'm like, yeah, nah, man, we got to take pride because as a grown man and we benefit from being citizens of this wonderful country. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that I defend it and represent it. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So the next question uh, would be, cause as, as I listen to all your episodes, um, one of the things I'm very fascinated about is just how, I know you guys prepare for your episodes. I know you, obviously, uh, you have your show notes and everything else. Mm. Nevertheless, it seems to be very much dynamic. It seems to be more so um, in the moment. Um, So what would you say? So of all the, I guess, right now, the 100 episodes, is there any one of them where you want to take it back in terms of thinking, changing your mind on some of those issues? Oh, boy. (laughs) You go first, Joel. (laughs) I would say no. Like, nothing comes to mind where I was like, oh, damn, why did we do that? I mean, I do do remember listening to an episode or two because, like, because I said I usually listen, like, once or twice. And I was like, oh, that was so bad. Like, I mean, the one example, like, this is totally not related, but, like, I'll just say my my own uh, hold on, noises. Can I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold that thought, Joel. I want to ask you, Joel. <laughs> so, Joel, you don't regret the episode, remember? Uh, um, um, we talked about um Mali, the Mal- the Malayan coup. Oh, and, and you kept saying co op, and you kept saying co op, right? So, so Joel kept saying co op, and I'm like co op. <laughs> I'm like, you mean coup? Right, and he's like, no, he's like, it says co-op. It's C O U P. It's co-op. And I was like, yo, Joel, like, yo, we're supposed to be academic. It's it's, it's coup d'état. It's yeah, French, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, go ahead. But Joel, I, I was like, if it was me, I would I would be like, yo, erase that, bro. But anyways, go ahead. Well, and and I mean, that's the part that's like, I mean, we all have those sort of like blunders, if you want to call it that, right? Like, so that's where I was like, whatever. Like, you know, it's it's 
like, cause I, and I told on the show, I said it to her now. I was like, I was thinking like I co-opted the government cause that's what they did. Mm. Right. Mm. And so I was like, Oh, okay. Just why did they spell it weird? Didn't even think about it. Like, you know, who use like as much as I've heard the term coup d'etat, like who, who uses that? Right. No, we only use the, the shortened version of it. Right. So I don't know. And whatever it is what it is. But I mean, in terms of, you know, stances or anything like that. No, I, I would say like, you know, the, the, if anything, I don't want to say I don't, I regret this, but like there's times when I wanted to go deeper, I wanted to go, you know, harder on an issue because I'm, you know, more libertarian in a sense, you know, and like whether it's the police reform conversation, right. Um, there's an aspect where I could go deeper down the libertarian rabbit hole, but um, I, I choose not to, or we choose not to. Um, and, and that's partly, um, you know, I think so much of the way that I look at this show is sort of demonstrating the way that I think about things as opposed to trying to convince someone, here's how you should think. Um, and, and that's because I, I know the conclusions I've got to, and I'm solid in them, but I want you to be solid in your positions. And so some of that's just saying, well, hey, you know how Christians just blindly support Israel? Maybe there's some room for conversation to realize Israel's not so innocent in this problem. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I would say like, yeah, for me, yeah, there's there's things I, w- um, I wish <laughs> I, I could take back, um, things that I said, or, or even just kind of me just being competitive and not preparing for an episode properly. And then afterwards kind of being like, Oh, I wish I said more. Or I said this clearly. Um, Cause I'm a perfectionist in that way. But honestly, Sam, like the hardest thing for me doing the podcast is being myself. It's very hard um, really? because yeah. Oh man. I like it's, it's, it's Russ. I wrestle with it um, all the time. And, you know, I always have good brothers around me who will encourage me to, to say, you know what, Darnell, you have to be yourself. Cause part of it is like my personality is offensive and and I, and I don't say it in a proud way or uh you know to be saying that i'm special but like my 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 comedic humor and my cavalierness um especially as a christian right because you know we we come from a, a conservative camp theologically right um so there's just certain things that us as reform guys we don't do we don't say you know people looking up to you uh, you know, be beyond reproach, all that, all that stuff. But my personality is really like, it's crazy. Um, and so I hold back. So sometimes I, I, I like, I want to hold back. Um, but, but my, but my friends and my family, as much as my wife will tell me, especially because my wife will tell me that I got to hold back, but sometimes she'll say, you know what, Darnell? And you will say, you've said it to, to me as well, Sam, you know what, Darnell, you have to be yourself. You have to be yourself and you have to say, say it the way you would say it. Um, talk the way you would talk. Even like one of our um, episodes on sacred language and using the N-word, right? Like, you know, y- yes, I u- yes, I used to use the N-word. And and I don't and and I don't feel a ways using using the N-word. You know what I mean? But I, I don't use it now. But so part of it is I feel scared a lot of the times um being myself on the show and so it's helpful when people come and they say hey yo darno that was actually funny yo actually i'm glad you said it that way <laughs> one of my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite uh, times with you was uh, you and i earlier this year in the summertime we uh we were um part of a conversation at a, at a, a different podcast and uh <laughs> oh, oh blackout tuesday i think it was yeah, yes, that was right yes. before we did our blm episode yeah, and then uh, Darnell made a comment that took me and the host by surprise. <laughs> and then afterward, as we were driving back, Darnell was like, man, probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. The man says, I probably shouldn't have said that. But then he says, you know, because then he, you know, he, was, he was worrying about a certain group of, you know, a certain group that might not be too happy with what he said. And then as he's thinking, he just kind of turns his head, looks back at me. He says, you know what? Who cares, man? 
you know, he, they're, not, they're not paying my bills. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> <laughs> and man, I was dying. <laughs> Yo, but but see, but Sam, but that, but that, you know, but that's the thing because part of like what we do, you as a blogger, you know, us as audio bloggers, um, you have to be yourself, and like, you know, you have to be yourself, and and that's what sells, and that's what people want. People want they don't want Darnell to be Sam Say. And they don't want Sam say to be Darnell or, or or they don't want me to be Daryl Harrison. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? They don't want yeah, they if they want Daryl Harrison, they go listen to yeah. Daryl Harrison. This is Darnell Samuels. Like, you know, take it or take it or leave it. And and that's the selling point. But yeah, after I made that comment, um, if if <laughs> we'll put in the show notes, <laughs> we'll, we'll put Blackout Tuesday <laughs> in the show notes. Oh, but, oh once once they hear it, they'll know exactly what I'm referring to. But, they, they can't miss it. Can't miss it. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? This is my confirmation. This is a confirmation I got from that episode and that comment. My auntie, <laughs> my auntie, my auntie messaged me and she said, she said, nephew, I never laughed so hard in my life. She said, I never laughed so hard in my life. And I said, you know what? If my auntie found that funny, I don't, I don't care who didn't find it funny. If my auntie found it funny, then yeah. it's funny. Bro, my, my, my girlfriend, I, I mentioned, I didn't tell exactly what it was. Mm-hmm. My girlfriend listened to it, mm-hmm. but she knew I'm like, yo. Darnell said something, man, where I'm like, I don't even know how you'd feel about it. And then she listened to it and she was dying too. She, because because it was it's 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 not it's just different, right? But that's the thing I love about you guys, right? You know, you are you and Joel is Joel. You know, I love that. I, I always have an idea uh, as to how Joel is going to approach something because he is himself. Yeah. And I think that's important as the, as the, uh, as the yes. audience, you invest in that. So sometimes when you guys are addressing Black Lives Matter or any other issue at all, we may, the audience may not know exactly where you will land on maybe every precise issue, mm-hmm. but they'll know how you think about it, how you communicate it. And mm-hmm. I think that's so important. That's what, because as you know, you know, when you guys are now in 100 episodes in, people aren't coming just for the content. They're coming for your characters, your individual personalities as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. being who you are, and of course we have, we should have self-control as Christians, but nevertheless, you know, our self-control as it concerns sin, not self-control as it concerns our personality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's true. It's funny, you know. I think about um, I read the book uh, "Black Privilege" by Charlemagne the God, and Charlemagne, who's a, a big time radio host, and and he basically said this, and this has been my motivation um, in doing this, and I've said this to Joel as well, and maybe to you as well, Sam. He's like, he talks about his success, and he says, "Look, you can either do two things: you can be for the people, or you can be for the industry. If you're going to be for the industry," then you have to mind your P's and Q's. If a guest comes on, don't ask them a certain question. They're going to give you a list of questions not to ask. You follow that, you'll be fine in the industry. But if, but, but he says, if you're for the people, then you're going to ask what the people, and you're going to speak the way the people are thinking. And the people will, and the people will affirm you. So it's either you're looking for the people's support or you're looking for the industry's support. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. There are not there are not many sound reformed podcasts where you're gonna hear one of the hosts um, quoting Charlemagne the God. You know, <laughs> that's just right there. <laughs> well, and again, right yeah, you're there. right. I, I know you quote him a lot. I know you're a big fan of his book. Um, at least many parts of that book, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but I think it's important. Like, of course, yeah, to make sure because there's there's a voice of young. Um, Christians who are in the culture, who who care about things in the culture, they love Jesus, they love the Bible, they they read they read John Owen, they read John MacArthur, um, right? But they also care about other cultural things. They watch Dave Chappelle stand up stuff, right? So so it's important to make sure that um, that we just be true to um, to who, to who we are. Now, Joel, partic- well, unless, Joel, you have any thoughts on that. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I mean, what can I say about Blackout Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, then, but, but, yeah, still so, uh, with you, Joel, particularly, and, um, of course, I can add uh, his two cents in as well, too, <laughs> uh, after, after, the, after the fact. Uh, but if, if somebody came to you and said, Look, I don't know much about you guys. Um, what episode should I start with? 
what would you mm. what, what what would that be? What is the defining <laughs> episode? What is the one episode that you think is you at your best, Darnell at his best? Like what what is that? What is the one that you would want to be the premiere featuring episode of the podcast of the first hundred episodes? Mm. Um, I I think um, you know there's there's a there's two episodes that sort of come to mind that that I think were really well done. Uh, police reform or defund the police. And and I sort of already ta- mentioned it before, but I thought, you know, there was a good mix of like l- bringing up the cultural issues, bringing up the current, you know, uh, arguments, but also sort of uh, critiquing them from the libertarian side without even, I didn't even really make the case for sort of the libertarian version of policing or, or you know, more, but but I, I would say, in, you know, from my perspective, we were planting the seeds of like, Maybe this is something we should think about differently, and we and I thought we did it in a in a manner that the conversation was was good. Um, the other episode that you know um, I, I've mentioned it before on the that I thought was surprisingly good was the brown privilege episode. Oh yes, mm-hmm. and I bring Wait, it up all the time. I I went into this like. I don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, I had like, I mean, my, the way that I prepare for episodes is to some extent, I'm always preparing. Um, you know, I'm listening to content. I'm consuming. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, you know, I take in a lot of uh, economic thought, you know, for my own, you know, refining of, of my own economic perspectives. And, you know, for that episode, just even when Darnell brought it to me, I was like, okay, whatever, like, sure, whatever this, you know, like I was thinking nothing of the episode in terms of it wasn't going to be anything substantial, but, but the way the conversation went, the way the conversation finished, you know, I look back on, I'm like, oh my, like, I just remember after it was done being like, that was amazing, you know? And, and, and I think both of those episodes do a good, are, are good examples of just us walking through a given sort of topic and, and having a good conversation. And that's why I think those two would be sort of uh, good episodes for someone to sort of get exposed to what we do. Um, and and I think they're, you know, to some extent, I also think they work great for like, let's say the non-Christian um, because they we, we have our taste of morality or our tastes of, of our theology in there. Um, but, you know, someone who's like, a non-Christian, they're not. They're not going to listen necessarily to our, you know, uh, John MacArthur episode, and and like for the, and maybe they are, but I just feel like those are the episodes they might be like, oh, I don't really care. That's you know, a Christian issue. I'm not going to, you know, um, but I think there there's a lot of our content that that because the way we even talk about morality and theology, um, we talk about it in a manner that that doesn't necessarily turn off a non-Christian. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good question, Sam. Um, you know, it was funny. There was an episode, and I wish, well, of course, I didn't know you were going to ask these questions, but there was an episode where we finished, and, you know, and Tyra said, How did it go? And I said, Man, Joel did better than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh, Joel, Joel killed this one. I was like, Damn. I was like, So I, I, I made the comment at the start of the season. I was like, Yeah, like, a, you know, like I'm a competitive person. That's just how I, how I, frame thing so i always try to outdo joel and i hope joel tries to outdo me so after i can't remember what the episode was joel i'm sorry man i can't remember to let let people know um where you just nailed it i was like oh good point but for me um you know out of 100 i would say the one that comes to mind is the wakanda forever Mm -hmm. wakanda forever um because we got into the pan-africanism and and applying the ideologies within um the movie black panther which is yeah. which would which was what you know people were saying oh i want to take my class to go watch black panther and see positive images of africa i'm like yeah well hold on but let's let's talk about the economic socio sociological implications of that movie and that movie was so rich with ideas i i really enjoyed that but i think the one that kind of hits our brand um was episode 85 on the black panther episode um that was 15 yeah black panther so wakanda forever was episode 15 but i would say the one that kind of hits home for us and hits our brand is canada's racist policies Hmm. Um, episode 85 where we talked about the systemic racism versus racist policies and we talked about collective rights versus individual rights Um, and then pierre trudeau um, and the six classes of canadian citizens and really looking at the built-in hierarchy within canada 
Um, and so it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And um, I really enjoyed that as well as um, um, Black Privilege. Um, and that was a Type Beast episode. Um, so for those who don't know, the Type Beast is a segment that we came up with where we uh, basically do a book review. So the idea is that the books we read um, impact the way we think and impact the show. So Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God was one of those episodes, episode 52. Yeah, another episode I think uh, deserves some credit. And it's also because we made a, a Darnell made an amazing social media out of it was the uh, dodging oppression oh! dodgeball tool of oppression. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, you know why that was funny? Because, yo, I'm going to repost it. I'll post it tomorrow. Um, because um, the Adam Sandler, um, Billy Madison. Um, so there was a scene in Billy Madison where um, Adam Sandler's character goes out into the playground and, you know, the kids are not being nice to him. They threw the ball at his head and he went inside and he felt sad. And the teacher said, okay, go back out there. And play, you know, and really get engaged. And so he went out there and he was killing the kids playing dodgeball. And so I was I was showing the visual video, but I had the audio from the podcast. In and the Darnell's main. face on Darnell. On, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, so I basically <laughs> memed my face onto Adam Sandler's face. And then I was giving my audio commentary about how when I was um, a camp counselor and we were playing dodgeball with the kids. And, and and so no mercy no so I, I when I play with the kids I was like yo this is a no mercy rule so headshots everything and so and so it was yeah that was funny classic and Joel didn't know I was gonna go there that actually I was aiming for the kid's head <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it was like contradictory to what I had just said I was like oh you don't hit people in the head and he's like actually I do <laughs> all right so so let me get this straight. You guys asked me to host this 100th, 100th special episode. Mm. And you, I just asked you guys to pick your favorite episode or the most defining episode of your of your um, you know run right now. Catalog. And, um, and you guys didn't mention any one of the two episodes that I was part oh. of, guys. Really? <laughs> really? Really? I thought, okay, if Joel's not going to get it, my boy Darnell is definitely, oh, definitely going to get gosh. it. And you guys just completely just dance. Oh, I'm just oh, kidding. I'm my kidding. God. Yeah, that's a I'm good point. Well, that's a good I'm point. Well, well. Although, although, that means that, you know, maybe two, uh, two or three years from now, when you guys are doing the 200th episode, don't ask me, guys. Don't come to me. <laughs> All right? No, Dude, I'm just, I'm just hold on. I'm okay, playing. hold on, hold on. So, wait, we had you on episode 20. We had man, you... you guys remember every man. You guys remember all your podcasts. Oh, yeah. I mean, man, we're, we're, I'm, I'm sure he's looking at no, it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm looking up uh, episode twenty, episode forty. So we had you man. on. So so we had an interview episode twenty, and then uh, life lessons episode forty. Is that it? And yeah, then so, this, uh, season and then, and then, season two, season three early, and then this is season four. We yeah. never had him on season one, but. That yeah. was like 15 episodes yeah, yeah, that we yeah. had like at right. the bank. Yeah, so then yeah, so then you're um episode 100. So man, 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 it goes without saying, man. It goes without saying, man. <laughs> man, no, I'm just teasing, man. No, I I'm, I'm honestly I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing, man. I I love you guys, man. So yeah, no, I'm very grateful. And and also uh, no, hold on. Before you say I also uh, I want to thank you for your support because like part of, you know, growing the channel is letting people know and and, and most of our support has only bec- has only come because of you. So No, nah, that's not true, man. You know, no, no, that's not true. Your support is because of how good you guys are doing, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. you guys are getting some great support and some feedback because because you guys are just good, good at what you do, you know. Um, so, no, man, that's all on you guys. Um, okay. So, I have a couple more questions left. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the next question is, has there been a time in the last three years where you guys have seriously considered ending things? If you have why what why what was the case and if you haven't why do you think you've been that persevering and not really considered any times of uh quitting the podcast i say that i say that because as a blogger i've definitely come to that uh believe it or not as early as earlier this year where you're weighing so many things in life right your your work and family and just different things and you say, man, you know, can I continue putting my all into this? Mm-hmm. So has there has that time ever, you know, um, you know, been true for you guys, or um, have you guys never really had to deal with that kind of, uh, um, you know, I guess question? Joel. Well, I mean, I think um, 
the we've always taken off tax season, which makes my life easier um, because I do I have um, it's like the craziest time of my life. Usually, I just do way too many tax returns for friends and family, um, and so if I was trying to do the podcast and that, it, I, I'd probably you know have a little more struggle. I would say not really. I mean, I, I've you know, there's times when it's a little bit tougher to to coordinate schedules and it's frustrating. Um, but, you know, in terms of, so do I have frustrations when we're trying to do it? Sure. But I've never, I would say, you know, uh, contemplating f- not doing it definitely is not, you know, been any sort of serious thought in that regard. Uh, I think in regards to, if it's, if it's any time I've thought about walking away or shutting down, it's um, me getting into the teaching profession because of the content is controversial. I'm controversial. And so like, it's, it's nothing. It's only by the grace of God yet that, you know, someone hasn't come and, you know, said cancel cultured me. Right. (laughs) Right. Cancel cultured me. Um, But everything I say, I say is in context and it's true and it's with grace and it's with humility. But there's a part of me that feels like, okay, you know what? I might as well, um, shut down everything and, and just focus on that and not let the podcast trip me up. But I think, I think the podcast helps, helps me more than it hurts me. I, I said to Joel, me and Joel talked about it a couple episodes ago afterwards recording and like, yo, this was fun and I've been having fun. And I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and, and until I stop having fun. Yeah, I think um, the the better we there, there's definitely times when it's you know I remember there's you know uh, I'll say uh, we're 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 pretty good at at doing our schedule well. I think the times when it gets tough is when we're when when the schedule gets tight, right? And that goes back to what I was saying about like not doing it during tax season and but putting out episodes every week. Yeah, because I mean that's the thing is like you know we we've sort of committed to doing that from day one. It was like okay once we whenever we have a season, it's going and going and mm-hmm. going, mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the exception of, of let's say a long holiday or something like that, we really haven't missed a week. And, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I also look at it like what Darnell said, like, yeah, this was fun. Like there's an aspect of it's like therapy oh, um, in that, you know, there's so much craziness going on in the world, um, <laughs> you know, especially in 2020 to some extent, because we haven't focused on, let's say COVID every episode or, you know, we, we're sort of getting back to um, things that let's say matter maybe a little more in the long term. that, that there's an aspect of, you know, just putting ideas out there and hashing through them. Um, the other side of that is I also, I, in 2017, right before we started publishing, I left my previous job, which was working for the city of Mississauga. So in terms of getting canceled, I didn't really have any concerns because <laughs> I sort of moved into, uh, let's say more of the charity nonprofit world. And I'm to some extent protected, but, but I definitely can resonate with Darnell's point about just sort of being like concerned that someone's going to try to cancel me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know what? But you know what? Honestly, Joel and Sam, like, like, what do you want me to do? As a like, as, especially as a Christian, like, what do you want me to do? Like, I have to, as a Christian, I you, know, I, I gotta, I gotta share my conviction. I got, I gotta share my truth. Like, back in the day, Christians are being killed and having their heads chopped off. You know, I'm worried about being canceled. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like that, that's how I look at mm-hmm. it. I'm like, what? I'm worried about being canceled. Like, you know, yeah. God, I pray. Me, you know, Joel and I, we pray. We pray over the episodes and, 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 and we try to be faithful to the Lord and the Lord will take us. But we have to be courageous in who God has made us to be. And I, you know, and part of it too is I can't apologize. I can't apologize for how God has made me. Hmm. You know, you, you raise a great point. Of course, you know, the cancel culture is horrible, it's real, it's destructive, it's not good for society, it's not good for individuals, it's not good for anybody. It's horrible. And yet, consider how privileged we are as Christians in North America, where the biggest kind of persecution we may have is getting canceled instead of getting our heads canceled off of our bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's, uh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. No gulags to be sent to. Mm-hmm. At least not exactly. yet. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Although exactly. AOC would be all over that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, she would. Or the NDP over here in Canada, right? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But no. Um, okay, so as we've talked about the past, 
the past 99 or including today. The so, so before episode. you get to that, just to, mm-hmm. to, you know, contextualize for the audience, you know, you asked us our, what, sh- what episode should they listen to? I'll still say your first interview is by still our most downloaded episode. So oh, okay. we, well. we were sort of avoiding just, you know, giving you extra praise, but yeah, yeah you still <laughs> oh, no, got the most don't. downloaded episode. No. So. <laughs> No, uh, you're, you're being kind. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say to that, man. Um, but no, I, hey, you guys have been good to me, man. You really have been. Um, you know, hey, in some ways, I've been kind of canceled by people in, uh, in the GTA. You guys haven't canceled me just yet. So I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm grateful. Um, okay. Sorry. For those who don't know, I know most of the listeners are from the GTA area, but the GTA is a greater Toronto area. So. All right. Okay. So yes, we've addressed the past. Um, now let's look forward to the future. So for the next 100 episodes or the next 99 episodes and more, uh, Lord willing, one day we'll be talking about 1,000 episodes. Um, Crazy. But until we get there, what are some of the plans you guys have? What can your audience, including myself, look forward to? Well, I think, I think uh, well, part of it is, you know, the goal, I think the ultimate goal for, for the Six Sense Report is to be the number one podcast in its niche, uh, number one podcast in the country as it relates to Canadian theological economic content. You know, of course, that would be the goal and to be um, financially sufficient, self-sufficient. Um, but we plan to, um, of course, make more episodes, but who knows, maybe maybe YouTube Maybe YouTube getting on video um, might might be in the cards. Wow. Um, poss- possibly, but again, like it's it's all about workflow. Uh, because like even right now we have a good workflow, um, but it's mm-hmm. expanding to make. Because like for example, we don't um, we look at opportunity cost and we look at not spreading ourselves thin. So before when we Joel and I started, I don't know, I'm sure Joel would agree, we were doing a lot. We were we were mm-hmm. doing a lot more things than we should have been doing instead of just focusing on what we do. Like um, what? Like so, for example, audio. You know, we we were doing audio for a while, and then we were um, trying to find someone to do it for we us. Being do you done mean like though. editing? Do you mean editing yeah. audio? Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. just edit editing and and then also doing audiograms um, and kind of like you know how Joe Rogan will do a three hour episode, but then release five minute, ten minute snippets. Um, we don't have the resources for someone to say, okay, wow, that was a good hour episode, but Joel had a really good rant of five minutes about this particular issue. Can we cut it, you know, and put it on you? We don't have, we don't have that kind of help. Um, right now, like we, we already, we hired a sound guy, right? Cause our, our listeners were coming back like, um, yeah, your audio's trash. The show's great. Audio's <laughs> trash. So, so Joel and I are like, okay, look, man, you know, he, he, here at the Sixth Sense Report, we aim to please, right? Service with a smile. So we hired Vaughn Russell of, um, out, Phoenix, yeah. yeah, yeah, of, uh, Phoenix Creative. And he's, uh, he's in South Carolina. So he, he's been doing, oh, wow. he's been doing our audio and, uh, he's awesome. He's really good, man. Um, so if you guys are looking at, you know, getting your podcast on and and um, not just getting somebody that um, does edits, but also gives feedback on how to improve. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to, to Vaughn. But that money for to pay Vaughn comes out of my, you know, comes out of my pocket and Joel's pocket and our wives' pockets, <laughs> you know, or, or in Joel's case, Joel's kids' mouths. Children's pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like... Um, I don't know, Joel. What's it like asking Jenna for money to to, <laughs> to support the podcast? How does that go? Oh uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's you know, to some extent, it's like, okay, what is this going to cost? Is it worth it? You know, to and and just you know, um, let's just say I used to play hockey three times a week, and I don't. No, it's not because of po- that's because I have kids. But you know, there's an aspect where you know you you're allocating your resources. So. Um, <sighs> You know, it's it's not cheap. I mean, we do love doing this, and and it's a to labor some of extent, love. You know, um, it's not that it's crazy expensive, but I would, you know, to Darnell's point, to some extent, if we didn't have to concern ourselves with uh, the cost of doing it, it would be better. Um, to some extent, you know, spend 
potentially, uh, let's say our own money, having someone else do audiograms for us or do social media for us um, because some of the current costs are already covered. So, you know, I know you've moved on to Patreon and, and, and you know, something like that is is something we're, we're looking at or considering. And, and what does it look like, right? I mean, there's like a million different models of whether you want to call it um, pay content or, you know, p- paywalls. Or, you know, but there's there's a million different ways you could sort of do that, right? And that's something that I'll say we're thinking through, you know, what, what would our audience want and how can they partner with us slash, um, let's say, get more of us uh, in, the, in, in, the, in that regard. Mm-hmm. What would you, what would you um, recommend to us, Sam? Because you're, you're already in that lane. You started almost like kind of like the same time as us, but now you are uh, monetized and you're doing, I assume, relatively pretty well. What would you suggest to us? Yeah, and I have to say, you know, um, you know, you've been very good to me. Um, you know, all, actually, both of you, um, both of you have supported. So Joel has supported my CCBR work, my pro life uh, advocacy. I'm so grateful for that. And then you, Darnell, have uh, been so good to me in uh, supporting my blog. Uh, so you guys have been incredible. Um, so whatever you think I've done for you, you guys have done much more for me. Um, you know, which, you know, taking out your money to support. Uh, to support me is much more than me just retweeting, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. retweeting your work. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, um, I know we, you know, me and Darnell uh, talked about you know, monetizing um, our content. Um, you know, I think in the spring, maybe or in early in the uh, in the summer, mm-hmm. and then I think I monetized my blog in June, I think. And it was a bit of a, a scary thing, you know, because you don't know what that will look like. You don't know, you know. Um, how the re- reaction might be to that um but it's gone very well so far um I, i'm very grateful um and uh because it, like like you guys man i mean you know people don't sometimes realize the cost of everything the cost um, of creativity bro my goodness yeah you know i so so for me since my my you know realm is in blogging i don't need a an editor for my uh for audio however um I, increasingly, I keep learning that I do need an editor for, for just checking my. Because sometimes, as you know, man, when you put so much work into something, and then to do the editing, no matter whether it's blogging or audio, you can just sometimes just want to be lazy with it. Sometimes you guys are, you guys are, you yep. guys are good, but me, yep. I show be lazy, page. man. Like you know what? Forget that. You know, I'm just gonna post this, not <laughs> yeah, think about right. it, and then after the fact, I'm like, dang, now I'm catching all these mistakes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um. But no, man. I I'm I'm hiring an editor. I'm um, there's someone that I've been a friend of mine who's a great editor who's been helping me out. But I've not yet gotten into uh, taking them on, you know, as in to be more regular yet. But that paying web hosting and different things, the books. My goodness, the books. I gotta keep, gotta keep buying. Like I honestly, mm-hmm. my biggest like, my biggest challenge right now is trying to find enough um, you know shelves to, to put my you know to put my books on just because of all the books I buy and stuff. But anyway, the point is is that. I thought you were going to say find time to read them. Exactly, exactly. These things are costly, and we're not complaining. We're grateful for them. It's just the fact that it does take a lot of resources and work. Um, So my advice is, you know, yeah, Patreon worries me because of, um, you know, their history recently over the last two, three years of uh, banning, essentially canceling, exactly, Um, you know, canceling voices they don't like. And yet the reason why they're so appealing is because they're the easiest and they're the best they are. Um, from everything I see so far, they're the best. It's, it's, it's easier for people to come in and support you. It's much, much easier. It's easier for the content creator to connect with his patrons or his supporters or her supporters. Um, they have a great way of uh, connecting um, your email to your account, like your personal email to your Patreon account where you can just communicate with your supporters just through your own email without going to even Patreon itself, which trust me, when you're like me, you want everything simplified. That's very helpful. Um, you know, so it's, it's easily the most appealing, I think, for content creators and their supporters. The, the concern is, of course, is if they choose to cancel you. But I think with what you guys do, and I think with what I'm doing, while we're tackling controversial issues, I think we're not very, I don't think we're reckless. Um, because we're not reckless, I think for now we should be fine from that. But nevertheless, I'm still trying to come up with a backup uh, support system in case that ever that happens to me. 
Um, mm. So I would say Patreon, of course, but sometimes also just ask, just trust your audience, trust your uh, your listeners and ask them, you know, ask to, hey, what do they think? Uh, what do they think about it? Um, and, um, you know, also just, yeah, you know, create, I, I would re- recommend creating an episode just to talk about, um, you know, monetizing your work mm. and just mm. uh, talk to them. Uh, share more information about it and look you guys have been you know the great thing about you guys is this you guys have been doing this for the last three years and people will know you're not just in this you know you're not in this you know for money you're just in there to serve people and i think people care about that they know you want to serve people because for me when i started um from what i heard from my audience they could tell that i was not in for the money at all because i i never imagined that i would even not even you know be in a position to monetize my blog mm-hmm. so when you've been blogging for like five years and now you're saying hey yeah, can you support me now because I'm struggling? Um, <laughs> they know you're doing it because now they see that you need it uh, just so you can survive as a blogger. And the same way for you guys, you guys have been doing this for three years. And for you guys to now be saying this after losing so much money and so much time and work and everything else, then they know you guys aren't doing it. And I think people care about your integrity. So just, yeah, create. I would say create an episode where you talk about that. And I think that'd be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I'm ready, you, know, you guys already have my support. I'll be ready to support you guys <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you're ready. So, you know, thank, thank, thanks a lot, thanks a lot, Sam. Um, really appreciate that. And again, man, you know, we'll we'll see how far this uh, six cents report thing goes. Um, I'm enjoying it. I, you know, it'd be really dope if we've got like, a, of course, we got on YouTube, but we got our own headquarters. Um, that that that's one <laughs> of my dreams. Like, you know, I, I like to I like to dream big, but I would really like a situation where you know, we would have an office space where Joel and I can have Go our and own, sit down to record. Yes. Yeah, sit, sit down to record and even and just to study and, and have a headquarters where people want to come and say, okay, Hey, look, um, I don't just want to be on the show, um, through zoom. I want to come on set. Um, you know, videographer, all that lighting. That'd be, that'd be really dope. Um, you know, I'm praying about that and see what, how the Lord, you know, works that out. That'd be really cool to transition to vi- uh, video. A couple more advice. I guess now here we are talking about business a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no doubt. A couple more is I know you guys are really great with networking, but I recommend doing more of that. More of that for sure. Mm-hmm. I know you guys are really doing great with that. I know Darnell, you've been going out to some places, especially I haven't talked to Joel about it so much, but mm-hmm. uh, networking is great. Now we're, you and I already have a relationship, but I think more people out there. Now I'm trying to do the same thing too, um, but more of that. And it's, I think also, I know we had this talk as well too, but uh, social media is huge. Um, as you know, I blog, but social media is part of my job too. I got to keep it up. I, you know, I was telling you earlier, I think, uh, before we were on air that <laughs> sometime when you're so busy, you know, you're not really feeling like going on social media, but you got to go cause it's part of your job. Yo. And I think that's something more that you guys need to keep uh, working on. Okay. And, uh, okay. Yes, you're right. Because yo, I like, I follow you on social media on every platform. <laughs> right. And so I'll be like, yo, is it like you post in your it's just tiring following you it's very tiring (laughs) because it is it is because because you are always giving commentary and always on on this foolishness on that foolishness on this foolishness um and just constantly putting out material and i always think to myself i'm like man i'm logging off and go snuggle with my wife (laughs) (laughs) and believe me man i prefer that too bro (laughs) I prefer that too, man. Yeah, no, no but it's a good. lot. That's it's good. a lot, Sam, and I and I totally respect that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, like, Lord, can I, can I give the people that much of myself? Um, and you know, I'm I'm praying that um that I'll be able uh, to do that. But kudos to you, man, because yeah, you're you're really good at managing it. And hopefully, um, you know, Joel have and I have extended the invitation to anybody who wants to be an intern on the show. Um, an intern meaning uh, a like to help us behind the scenes with with things that we need help with we can help you and teach you how how things manage behind the scenes. we can teach you about economics theology canadian history um how to build your own brand and podcast uh let us know and then and then in turn you can help us out behind the scenes to to get some stuff done so please let us know uh work something out yeah it's funny like you're talking about social media just i'll say that like i know i've had people be like you know, challenging me to comment more. Cause I, I mean, if you look at my Facebook page or my Twitter, it's like, I curate a lot of content by retweeting or sharing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I don't, I, I just don't have time to comment. And then part of that's like, I'm using it as like content curation. Like I'm aggregating things that, I'm, that, that I find um, either sometimes it's just funny stuff, but for the most part, like, you know, 
either pieces of information or data points that like a lot of times I end up going back to my, my news feed being like, Oh, I need that for the show notes page, you know, and just scroll. And, and so, or I, I let people comment and then I engage with them. And, and sometimes my, you know, my verbiage in response ends up as something I use on the show, right? Like I'll, I'll literally sit on the show with my comment in front of me um, just to, to spark maybe a, a sentence or, and I, the police reform is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, where I just, I, 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 for me anyways, like articulating my thought through a comment where I'm trying to be very precise in my, you know, communication. Um, I, I, to some extent, I don't have the time most of the time to do that as like commentary on the thing I've shared. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely have noticed Sam, uh, has that game on, on lock. Mm -hmm. And and I'll say this, man, uh, it's not, I'm not on my own. My, my girlfriend, whom I'm uh, desperate to marry very soon. Um, she's been helping me out big time, man. My goodness, man. I, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a team effort. Yeah, yeah, and I think no one can do this without without some help. And uh, you guys have each other, but yes, you know, if you guys could, uh, some of your listeners could, you know, reach out to you guys so that they can, um, you know, um, if they have the talent, you know, and the ability, you know, and the uh, time to. You know, help you guys and well. love the That'd brand. And if you actually love the brand and, and want to exactly. get, you know, support it, yeah. And and I'll say, you know, shout out to my wife in that regard. Like, you know, there's enough times where, like, if she didn't take care of the kids and and you know make things easy on me, I wouldn't be able to record, right? Of so. course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, my <laughs> wife as well, uh, Tyra as well, um, helping me behind the scenes and helping me to study and 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 get books. And a lot of times I'm like, hey, babe, can I, can I buy this book for for the show because I I, I want to study. And she's like, okay, is it a good book? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And she's like, okay, okay, get it. And I was like, cool. And I was like, man, I'm telling you, man, I married the right woman, you know? So, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, shout out to our, our families who, who've been supporting behind the scenes and, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll, you know, there, there's more to come and we'll get more support and the show will become self-sufficient. That's fantastic. So before we, uh, before we, we, uh, you know, we end this, uh, you know, one hundredth episode historical. In, yes. Any any thoughts? Any any uh, concluding comments at all before I end my show? Before I end my <laughs> podcast? <laughs> oh, uh, no, I just say thanks. Thanks to the listeners. Uh, thanks for the feedback. It goes a long way because sometimes, as much as you know, we have X amount of subscribers. Sometimes you think people aren't listening, or they don't care, or that the show was was wasn't good, or whatever the case is. But um, thank you for those little times those people have reached out and said yo good job yeah, comments good point. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank you no, it the, goes a long way to making us do more and do better yeah and, and yeah i would say thanks to those that send us content too i mean that just demonstrates they want to know our opinion on things right so um you know we have we have a bit of a you know a niche audience or a, a reasonable size audience that that you know i'm, I'm always so like to some extent grateful and a, a slightly surprised you're like man it's more than just like our mom, you know, friend, or our, yeah, our yeah. wives following, <laughs> or yeah, family our members friends, that are yeah, that are yeah, you know yeah. listening, right? So, um, yeah, just grateful, and and you know we continue to want to get better. So, you know, I uh, don't don't hesitate to challenge us to some extent. Hmm. Okay. That's it. All right, guys. Then for the last hundred episodes and for the next hundred episodes, six cents make change. So I said makes instead of make instead of so I said make instead of makes. Yeah, so six yeah, cents oh, weird. Six I, cents makes change. So say I that. think I think the six cents aspect made me I don't know, whatever, but yeah. Okay. Six cents makes change. Say it again. Six cents makes change. Okay, say it more smoothly. <laughs> six cents. Oh, oh my gosh. Say- <laughs> Come on, Sam, what's Hold going on? on? Six so, yeah, I'm saying six. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here forever, guys. Six cents makes change. Yeah, say it again. Six cents makes change. Okay, do it smoothly, man. Okay, here. The you know the ver the the blurb that you said before. Say that and then say it. Yeah. Okay. 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 I see. For the last hundred episodes and for the next hundred episodes, six cents makes change. But you heard me. Does that make sense? I hear-